More recently, I've been building C Sharp applications and tried to use other database formats. And I'm very used to using SQL, but I wanted to spend a lot more time with MongoDB. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to be looking at using C Sharp with MongoDB to delete records out of MongoDB. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video already about looking at filtering and querying, you should check that out right now. Come back and watch this one because we're going to be using some of the filtering techniques to look at which records we want to delete. If you can't filter properly, it's going to be hard to delete the right record, and you want to be careful when you're deleting stuff. A quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my free weekly software engineering newsletter and my courses on Dome Drain. With that said, let's jump over to Visual Studio and look at deleting stuff. Okay, so everything that you see at the top here is covered in previous videos, which I have linked you to already. But if you don't want to watch the previous video on filtering, it's all right here and pretty strong straightforward for the basic stuff. So we are starting with an empty filter on line 20, and then we're combining that with this filter builder equal filter, where we're going to look for documents with a name property equal to my name, Nick Cosentino. Now, if you're doing more advanced filtering, you may want to check that video out because it will explain how you can combine these things to do something a little bit more advanced. Now, when it comes to deleting records from a collection in MongoDB, it's really straightforward. We have this delete one method that we can use if you want to go delete a single record that's going to match this filter. And of course, there's async variations of all of the different methods that we have with the MongoDB driver in C Sharp. So if you're using async code and you're using async await, you can go use those and make sure that you're awaiting these things. In this particular case, and for the rest of the examples, I'm just going to show the synchronous versions. But like I said, there are async versions as well. So before I go run this, I want to show you what I have in the database already. And that way we can see these things get removed. And I'm going to have to take some time in between to go reinsert them so we can keep running the other examples. So jumping over to MongoDB Compass, you can see that I have these three records in here. I'll just refresh. So I have three. Two of them have name Nick Cosentino and one has name Dev Leader. And going back to the code, looking at the filter we have, this is a filter that says go delete the records that match name Nick Cosentino. I'm doing this example on purpose because delete one is the method that we're calling, right? But we have two records that match this filter. So what should happen? Does it delete one or does it delete all of the records that match this filter? Well, I will go run this and then we'll see what it prints. So it said in the code that it did delete only one record, right? So that's good news, but is it true? Let's check out Compass and see when I refresh this, it did in fact only remove one of them that had Nick Cosentino in the name. Now, I believe that it will do this in order of the IDs that it's created or the default sort order, but I wouldn't bank on it. <laughs> I think if you're trying to delete stuff, you want to make sure that you're being very careful about what you're deleting, of course. So if you're writing filters that maybe could match too many things, you may want to reconsider the filter that you're writing to be very specific about the records you care about. And if you're basically saying, I want to delete anything that matches this filter, we probably don't want to use delete one. There are other methods we could use. And those other methods are delete many. So this is probably what you would want to use if you wanted to get rid of everything that had Nick Cosentino in the name. So I'm going to go back to Compass. I'm going to change both entities to have name Nick Cosentino. And we should see that this one deletes two records. OK, here's a quick shot before we go back to the code. Both documents have name Nick Cosentino. Now, if I go run this, we can see deleting records using delete many and then it deleted two, which should mean if I go back to Compass and refresh this, all of it goes away. So Again, two different variations. I didn't touch the filter. I would say if your filter is supposed to be covering many things to delete, use delete many. And if your filter is not supposed to and you're using delete one, you probably are going to have some weird behavior because some things are going to be left behind. The last example that I want to walk through is this other method that we have called find one and delete. This one's interesting because it's very similar to the first one we saw where we were using delete one. This is find one. So again, you want to think about a filter that is hopefully matching one thing because it will, in this case, only match one, even if your filter matches many, but it's going to find one, give it back to us and delete it at the same time. So this is really helpful if you're deleting something because you want it out of the database, but you want to know what that record was. 
So instead of doing like a query to pull it back and going, cool, I got the data, let me go delete it now, you could do it in one step where it will delete it and give you the result back that you deleted. I've just gone ahead and recreated the data in here so we can see that we have three records once again. I'm going to go run the code and we should see that we get something printed back to the console. Right, so we get one object that comes back. Deleted record is going to be this ID here. So I'm gonna go show you in Compass now that we don't have this ID of the two objects that are remaining. So back in Compass, if I go find, right, we only have two here, and this one ends in 58BF, and this one ends in 553A. This one that we had was 58BE. Do we see that anywhere on our screen? And I think the answer is no, right? 58BF, so that's not the same as BE. And this one's 55, it's not even the same at all. So this is an example, like I said, if you wanted to delete something and get that result that you deleted. So remember, when you're deleting things, you wanna be very careful with your filter because of course, if you're mixing and matching your filter that could match many things and only deleting one, that might give you some weird behavior. Once that stuff's deleted from the database, good luck getting it back, right? So you want to be careful with this kind of thing. And you have a bunch of different options when you're building up the filters. Like I said, it's a pretty straightforward syntax, which makes this awesome to work with but your filters can get very complex. If you want to continue to learn about MongoDB and working with C Sharp, when the next video is ready, you can check it out here. Thanks and I'll see you next time.